This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The White Shake from 1952, directed by Federico Fellini. This film's tagline, RJ, a very funny picture by Federico Fellini. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Terrific. I, I've, I've always wanted a very funny picture. In Italy, small town newlyweds Wanda and Ivan Cavalli embark on their honeymoon in the big city of Rome. Ivan dutifully wants to keep appointments with family and church, but Wanda is only interested in meeting her favorite photo strip star known as the White Shake. While Wanda impetuously sneaks away to locate the object of her affections, disconsolate Ivan tries his hardest to keep up appearances with the couple's relatives. So RJ, let me just mm-hmm. let me just throw this out here. This is, I think, another entry in this this is fine series we've found ourselves in, in the Criterion mm-hmm. Collection, where um, I think this movie's place in the collection is, it's Federico Fellini's first solo film. That's, uh, and that's, that's the why. The sole merit of the movie is, uh, oh, this was, I better throw it in there. Yes? I, I didn't hear a word you said, hence me shaking my head. <laughs> ah, terrific. Bagul is back. Bagul Just in time back. for Fellini. Yeah. Uh, I was just kind of reaffirming your point. I said this: the inclusion of this movie is strictly based on, it's like, hey, we got a lot of Fellini films. Why don't we just put in one more? We gotta, is it good? We gotta, well. We, we, gotta, we gotta preserve it. Gotta throw it in there. Just gotta throw it in there no matter what. Well, it's not a bad movie. It is a movie. It's it's exactly what it is. I what I described. That is the I guess first twenty odd minutes of this. Um, Wanda and Ivan they come to Rome, and I mean I've never been to Rome, so I have no idea if the, the sense of place is relevant or not. It it could have been anywhere. I guess until mm-hmm. the very end where they have the big wide shot of the Vatican when they do indeed spoilers, folks get to see the Pope. Off screen, though. Off screen. That's off panel. Yeah, you see them walk, making their march toward the Vatican, I guess, for this mm-hmm. uh, this illustrious meeting with this very great man. Um, Allegedly. So Ivan is kind of, I don't know, what do you call him, uh, a stereotype of Italianism? Ooh, who, Ivan? Oh, spaghetti. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's playing in a lot of stereotypes, I think, and a lot of... Uh, I would say assumptions of cultures and races of people. Oh, do you know what I mean? No. Did you get any of that? Yep, I did. I yeah, got, I, I, actually, I got all of it, dude. but I was like, Whoa, "Oh, and wait, you wait, don't wait. follow." I don't. I don't know. We're the one going. who brought it up. I did, and then you you went somewhere with it, and I'm like, "What are you saying?" I don't know. Ivan is definitely, he's playing a type. Let's say that. <laughs> he is. What, what type is he, though? What is he? Personality? Yeah. He is a, he's a weird dude who's obsessed with all this, for with his appearances. And you're like, relax, dude. Nobody's going to mm-hmm. fucking care if your girl, well, that's not true. I'll get to that point. But yeah, Ivan's, Ivan's got some stuff. And Wanda is the, like, very meek, like, bride, I guess. Like, she's just, you know. It doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. She lives in a world of romance and fantasy. And RJ, I'm not mm-hmm. sure if you're really uh, super familiar with the photo strip because I kind of wasn't understanding what this whole white shake thing was about. Um, so I've, have you confirmed that it's shake or chic? It, it's shake. I mean, it all depends. Like, I mean, if you believe Vince McMahon, it's uh, it would be the the white chic, but um, I believe uh, it, it would be the shake would be the proper I'm going pronunciation, off of, I guess. I'm going off of that uh, Legend of Zelda lore when uh, Zelda dresses up as the ninja. Uh, she's, I, I think it's pronounced chic, but it's spelled S-H-E-I-K. So yes. I'm going to stick with that. And uh, you say shake, I'll say chic, and uh, you know, time will tell who uh, who the better man is. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a... Who who right knows? Who gives a shit? Well, uh, most people would probably call it the white cheek because of probably the iron cheek. But mm. 
I, I have heard because yeah. there, there's a um, there's a Frank Zappa album called uh, Shake Your Booty. Who Zappa? I know, I know Zappa. Yeah, his his best selling album is Shake Your Booty. Oh, I, I don't know unless you, you, you want to call it Chic Your Booty. Well, I mean, that's got that would give it a completely different meaning because if you're going to chic your booty, that might be like taking it to a spa for a day and you know getting it waxed up, shined, and uh, polished. Right, right, right. Kind of uh, like kind of like what happens in this film. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, I was going to say the main main point is who really gives a shit. You whatever you call it, it's it's not going to make the movie any better. So, yep. take it away, boss boys. Boys. So. Uh... Wanda, she uh, she sneaks off. She she says she's going to have a bath, a hot water bath, which costs money. And uh, Ivan's like, "Yeah, you can you can take one today. I'll take one tomorrow." <laughs> and you're like, May, "I might have a nice bath tomorrow." <laughs> That's right. On our honeymoon, you know, I'm gonna get maybe mm-hmm. a little a little stinky downstairs for later tonight. Excuse me. A little a little swassy, you know. After a long day of riding around in carriages and traveling about, you know, you know what happens. The human body, as as an adult male, you don't. You you should be showering every uh, could day. Could you could you explain a little bit more, are, please? I I don't are, think I fully RJ, follow. Are you familiar with the bars? I'm not. Could you elaborate? <laughs> it's sort of like where the balls and the arse meet. Uh, you call the, that the, a the, bar or the taint, or, or you call it, <laughs> or, or perhaps taint. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of taints and gooches and, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what is it? Uh, the devil's land, like landing strip or, or devil's takeoff or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, I've never heard of a bar. That seems <laughs> obtuse of you. Well, it's out there. I don't think it is, but it's, it's right anyways, up there with, uh, going. with Bungai. Ooh, that that one though that's a favorite of mine actually yeah, yeah you really and, like and you you, you really like that one you didn't know about that one the bung guy yeah <laughs> so yeah, like anyway the white yes. shake so wanda she uh mm-hmm. she sneaks off because she's got other plans alternative plans um that she what kind of? she wrote a she wrote she's been writing some letters to uh mm-hmm. i guess this it's like photo strip magazine. This like soap opera fu romanti, something like that. I was reading about something that like is so Italian and so removed from like. There's nothing like this in North America. Like there was like no photo comic strips when they did it. They stopped doing it because they suck. There, there's a reason why like fumetti never took off. It's a terrible art medium mm-hmm. because it's like it's bad stagey people making really like pantomimey faces, and then you put the word balloons to them. And you tell stories that way. It's, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, not what, good. What, what, a, what a niche, what a niche thing to be uh, tackling. But in Italy at the time, they were very popular. So they're like, hey, let's make a movie about this. And then they're like, hey, you know, guess who wrote the first screenplay for this uh, that they didn't wind up using? Our good, close, personal friend, Michelangelo Antioni. Antioni. Oh, I thought you were going to say Bogdanovich. <laughs> Beat Bogdanovich. That's right. Hot Is he off not of involved? Chapter two. Yeah. Okay. He's not. Okay. Cool. So, anyway, I Ivan's at anyway. a loss. I, Ivan's at a loss. He doesn't know where Wanda's gone, and hijinks ensue when his family comes and they're like, "Where's Wanda? We want to meet this girl." And he's got to make up all these excuses. She's sick. Mm-hmm. It's all very run of the mill. It's like it's almost like it's a uh, ripped from a Renee Claire film. RJ, almost. It's almost like a, a play on a Woody Allen film. Almost, some would say. To roam with love. I, I mean, maybe. maybe you could go to a place and have love, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's your prerogative. Mm-hmm. Um, so Wanda, she goes to the the yes. studio where this uh, these fumetti's are, I guess, like housed maybe they do their interiors there and she, mm-hmm. and they're all like all very everyone's like so lovely to her you know when i write fan letters i get immediate access to everything i want i meet the stars who do you write fan letters to jerry I, I that's between me and my my icons oh i know jordan peterson mm-hmm. yeah he's, he's, he's one of the big ones probably him and then I don't know. Weren't you really into um, what was the name of that lady 
from uh, Alaska who ran for vice president. Oh, uh, Sarah Palin? Yeah, weren't you like in her, part of her fan club? I'm a fan of Nalen Palin. Whoa! Hachi machi. So Wanda, she gets uh, yes. she gets, gets swept into this whole thingamadoo. She gets put into a back of a truck and driven out to a beach. And uh, like that, you do, that's like that's what happens. Um, yep. I'll say that up to this point, there's like one kind of striking shot here that I liked, where Wanda is walking down the street, and there's just like that big wall of like old like European style advertising and want ads and posters. And they look awesome. Like that great sure. use of fonts and stuff. And she's walking along. And you're like, Oh, that's a good shot. That's something. Sure. And then, uh, when they get to the beach, it actually starts feeling like a Fellini movie. Cause it seems like his, mm-hmm. uh, his iconography really works well in like a place with flat horizons and just, she's like mm-hmm. larger than life characters. But the, one of the problems that I had a lot with this, and maybe it was the copy that we were watching, but everything seemed a little too close. Like there wasn't enough mm-hmm. uh, negative mm-hmm. space for like everything to build up. It just, it felt a little cramped. And I don't know if that's just cause uh, this being his, uh, his first solo effort and maybe working with a, uh, cinematographer he didn't know very well maybe they mm-hmm. just weren't working as well as uh, he would wind up in a few years working as well as i don't know like maybe he'd get better and he did he he definitely got better than the white sheep. allegedly allegedly so wanda mm-hmm. wanda's being uh kind of now uh picked up on by creepy white shake guy He's, t- he's telling a whole bunch of stories and uh, all the sweet things that he probably tells all his biggest fans. And then they go on a sailboat and uh, they go on the sailboat and he starts putting on the moves and she's like, uh, no, I'm not interested in you in that way. And it, she, she gets referred to at least twice in this as being a tease, of course. And uh, yeah, I don't know. He gets concussed. He gets hit in the back of the head by a sailboat. This is a very... Mm-hmm plot heavy film if you haven't picked up on this yet all the hijinks that's happening with ivan back in back in town because he's trying to find her and now he's starting oh she's absconded she's with some other man now oh what's going on oh my reputation oh we have so much to behold our family name (laughs) etc 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 she shows up back at the Mm -hmm. beach uh that's all resolved but now uh uh-oh dude's wife's here and she's a big old fellini lady Big, big butt, big what, tits, Jared? big hair, Fellini lady. Excuse the, me. A, a Fellini mama. And uh, she's pissed. She, she slaps the shit out of Wanda. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, of course, they have to pull them apart. And then uh, Wanda's like, no, no, you know, Ivan told me all about how you tricked him. And it's like, oh, boy, not, not helping out, honey. <laughs> so she runs away because, you know, she was being assaulted. And they can't find her. And they're like, well, we got to keep moving. And so they pack up and they leave her in this like exotic location. She finds uh, this Mario looking man who drives her back. Vitaly? Yeah. Drives her back. He's like, hey, you know, you're a pretty good looking lady. And she's like, no, thanks. Oh, you fucking tease. Because of course. Uh, yeah. So she's kind of stuff you do when I drop you off. Yeah. So she shows up. And uh, at the back of the hotel, she, but she's ashamed. It tells the the bellhop, "Hey, I'm like, I, I'm still pure and innocent because that's what's important ultimately. But uh, I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm 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 embarrassed, and so she doesn't go back. And of course, uh, Ivan, he doesn't. He's like he's in a shambles and just wandering around the streets, lost. And he gets comforted by uh, I don't know RJ if you noticed Cambria. <laughs> Remember, you know references to previous films that we've watched with characters. Who is the character he gets comforted comforted by? Uh, the, the 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 two uh, prostitutes that come along from Knights of Cambria, Cabria. Oh fuck! You, you, I there's no way I would remember. They, that. They, shit. they literally call her that. <laughs> like that's her name, and it's like, oh, it's the same character, RJ. Imagine, imagine having to notice things mm. and pay attention to things while watching movies. <laughs> Do you know how checked out I was at this by the time it reaches the the 80 minute mark where this film actually ends? Do you know how checked out of this I was at 30 minutes, let alone 80 minutes? Come on, Jared. The whole movie? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I watched it. The whole movie, Jared. Yeah. I watched the whole movie. Sure. But did I notice these fine details? No. It's a, it's a whole Not scene. A it's an entire Not scene. A no, I wasn't paying attention. 
Nope. Do you want to hear my take on this movie, Jerry? Or do you have some more yeah, things no, to that's, say? That's the end. That's the end of my takes. They get back together. All is forgiven. And they go meet the Pope. Just like mm-hmm. you and I. Remember that time? Time has passed. And we will meet the Pope. Hey, Jerry, you know how this movie's called The White Sheik? The White Shake? Yeah. Should be called The White Shit. <laughs> yeah, hey, I've said that before. Oh, yeah, but I was thinking it, too, at the same time I watched this. I think this movie has, I think you were giving it too much credit when you said that it's just a whatever movie. I think this movie is, like, borderline unwatchable. What? I don't, it's fine, but this movie in no capacity needs to exist anymore. Uh, and I think that this movie is extremely dated and I think it hurts it to a point where I was watching it and I was like, this sucks. This movie is super lame. Uh, I think this movie is really lame. Cause as you said, the main conflict is about a woman who is like, she like gets persuaded by like a fancy movie star. Okay. And then she leaves. And then the whole conflict is that her husband's like, I can't tell my family that uh, my new wife is gone. Oh my God. It's like, you can't just be like, she's not here, man. Like I, I realized this was like fucking 60 years ago. And it's like, that was unheard of. Cause he mentions like, well, you can't be in the elevator alone with a man. It's like, mm-hmm. that is, that is uh just scandalous. It's unbecoming. So, yeah, so I, I I realized like that was the the air of the culture sure. at the time. Yeah, but I found it I found it super everything with the husband I found so annoying because you have these intrusive ass people. He's like pretending to be on the phone with her, which is actually like the scene when it cuts back to the porter and he's no selling everything. That's <laughs> actually a really good scene. But like, so husband's on the phone like pretending to talk to her, and then. Uh, the the fucking his family is trying to listen to her talk. They're like, we just wanna we just wanna hear her voice. We need to hear your beautiful wife a voice. So we're so excited to meet her. And you're like, okay, like I I realize it. It's very exciting. You have a new 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 member to the family, but they can't fucking like withhold themselves for one second. It's like get away from me. I'm on the phone. That that's what I would say, Jared. But then they're all like, uh, he's like, no, she doesn't feel good. She's not going to come. And they go up there. They're like, we're going to wake her up. We're going to bring her to the party. And you're just like. He's a, this like, accent I, I, I don't approve of. That's what they say. And But would you not just be like, fuck off. Get away from me. And it's like I said, I know it's a different time. But I think the movie is structured. It's and ha- it's, 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 I, I understand. It's, it's about a world where respect and fumetti were very uh-huh. essential Fume- to, Fume- to Roman culture, to uh, Fume- to the Italian character. I, <laughs> I know that, like, I know that that was at the time and even long after, that was how things were. But my problem is that the entire structure of the movie is based off of that. All of the jokes are set up for that. And, like, every joke I felt like in this movie is picture, like, if Bugs Bunny was wearing a uh, white collar t- <laughs> jokes, uh, if like picture a cartoon character and it was like pulling on the collar of their shirt, like, Ooh, and like steam coming out. Mm-hmm. That's this whole movie. Yeah. And I, I get it. Some people still find this extremely funny. Some. And that's fine. If you like it. It's not some funny. do. This, this is a comedy. It's, it's not, it's, it's not, not very funny. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. I think this movie is incredibly lame. Uh, for See, I, all of those, reasons. I don't even think it's lame. It's kind of just like I oh, think it's lame. It's it's what it is. Yeah. It's like a it's a comedy that was made for an audience in 1952, and yep. uh, it's like not even like it's it is for Fellini completionists only. Like, and yes. that's that's stretching it. And it is yeah. uh, as I said, this belongs in the this is fine question mark where it's just like this yeah. is not for me. It's not. I, I watched it. Um, I, it pretty well held my attention the entire time, and like it wasn't like, bore, it wasn't boring. It was like oh, mm-hmm. just scenes like things happen, and but at the same time, I'm keeping in my mind. I'm like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely uh, someone's f- first film where they're probably making material that they're not terribly invested in either because it was work. Mm-hmm. Very, it was very, wor- it's very workmanlike. Yeah, and yeah, I get that too. Like I know when you say it's fine. My my big thing with this. 
I think it's super lame. But I don't actively dislike it where, let's say, Horse's Mouth, my man Godfrey, or like, oh my, I, know see, I'm, 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 I know where I'm going. Just let me finish. Yeah. Those movies actively annoy me. They, they're just like, those movies annoy me. And then there's movies that are downright bad. Like Sid and Nancy and uh, Henry Henry the Fifth. You gave I think you you liked Sid and Nancy fine at one point. Nah, yeah, Uh, Sid and Nancy's annoying too. Anyways, I just mean it's it doesn't annoy me or make me mad like other very low rated movies in the collection so far. I just think it's like I don't I think it's super dated. Like all every joke in this movie is about he's like, I don't know if my wife is. Oh, that's a different accent. I don't know if my wife <laughs> is oh my is God. having the sex with other people. And you're like, OK, that, is, that, is that now is that a quote? Uh, you don't. Can you you can't even lie. That is entirely what this movie is about. Well, yeah, is it? I, my, yeah, my like, wife. I don't know if my wife's like banging other dudes, and uh, then or like, a dude, ah, right? Bang, banging a, a dude. dude. So it's not me. And, and then I feel like the other part of it is like kind of on is, the is nose. Is that old and, timey? Is that like something that people don't worry about anymore? Don't people no, like people mur- still worry yeah, about they, that? They, they sure I, do, RJ. Some might even say it's universal. Yeah, uh, I unless, think unless they identify the as polyamorous, person. and then it's not an issue. Uh, I, I'm aware. I think it's the presentation of it. How uh, sure? Like it honestly, it feels slapstick to me. So even like when when uh, when the white cheeks wife comes up and she's like, "Hey toots, come over here," and she calls her a whore. It's yeah. like, "Come over here." She like kind of like uh, pitter patter steps all the way up there, rat a tat tats, John Rambo style. Like she mm-hmm. like ta- like, and, and it's like physical comedy bit bits, right? And I think there is. It's it's just it's just dated stuff. I don't know. It's fine. Like it's just not not anything that I think is funny, and uh, I think it's really lame. I think all those people really suck, uh, and I think there's certain things in this that are like jokes, but then at the same time, it's like what? Uh, like when she leaves, like a complete fucking lunatic, she leaves the tap running on the bathtub, and the water fills it everywhere, and it cuts to him. He's like screaming to the heavens. He's like my wife, and it's it's very playful and it's very slapsticky, but then at the same time, 60, 70 years later, not 70, yeah, yeah, 60, 70 years later, you're kind of just like, hmm. eh, eh, whatever. So I, I don't di- I don't actively dislike this movie. I don't think it's like super bad or anything like that, but I do think it's incredibly lame and extremely dated to the time that it came out. And it's I've said before, do you think do I think Fellini was like, what are people going to think about the white chic in 2019? No, I, 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 I acknowledge that completely. But as a man, <laughs> as a man Jared, watching tell me it, more, Mel, <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a hetero cis male white man watching it in 2019, maybe, maybe uh, it's, maybe Mel Gibson it, needs to remake this. It seems to be I uh, material to relevant up. to his interests. You you know what you know what he would do though, he wouldn't just like show that the white sheik is like a scam and uh, just like this schlubby dude. He would actually have some scenes set up in there where he's like using torsos as shields, running through turrets, Hawkeye style, mm-hmm. and uh, you would just be like, yeah, Mel Gibson really uh, glammed this yeah. up. That's oh. uh, that's what we always that's what this show always needed. I'm curious how uh, the works of Mel will age sixty seven years later. Plus? Probably not, but what does age well 60 plus years later? All the good stuff we've talked about, some, I guess. Some good stuff. Hey, how about that yeah. uh, Passion of Joan of Arc? That movie's old as shit. And, That's uh, true. It holds up pretty good. Hey, RJ. Well, what, and you, yeah, exactly. You Anything about, in our top 20s yeah. are good. You want to yeah, hear what, what who, are you going to say? Wait, who hates this movie? Who even has the time to hate this movie? Well, other than me, because a, I a have few, to. Uh, here's a few people. Yeah. Okay. We got Pandemonium. With one and a half stars. All the worst tendencies of Italian cinema in a movie. Just loud and obnoxious people. <laughs> wow. I mean, I feel like that's a mark against Italians in, in general and not, not necessarily Italian movies. What about those Dario, like or, or those Dario Argento movies? I don't know. Are those filled with loud know. and obnoxious people? What the hell? I guess it's, Maybe. This is, I, this, these I are the worst think... tendencies of Italian cinema. Right. 
I think this person's gripes are more with a uh, an entire like collection of people instead of just a collection of film. Uh, they gave Playtime five stars and Grand Illusion five stars, Jer. And they say they don't like Italian movies, but they gave Stromboli five stars. That sounds Italian, if I ever heard it. Are you a Stromboli guy? I've never had it. You've never had Stromboli? No, I don't think so. Man. Oh, uh, very strange. This person also gave Black Ho- Blackhawk down a half a star. But uh, after my own heart, they gave Michael Haneke's Funny Games a half a star. No. So they're not totally out there. Uh, when do you want to eat Stromboli? I'll take you. <laughs> Simon, one and a half star. Okay. It's yes. trying way too hard to be this super dramatic Italian movie, but it fails miserably because I laughed almost halfway through. Mm. What? The, the, what do you? The acting isn't so great either. The dialogue, the dialogues don't make sense at times. It was just a disappointing mess. Oh, mm. worst of all, the shake was not at all dreamy. He looked like a gay Italian Jay Leno. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I didn't think that, but now that it's been presented yeah. to me, it's kind of, it's like, oh uh, yeah, he maybe, maybe a, that he, is he gay that, Italian. I, I, I did often like when I was looking at this man, I mean, he's not, he's not, my, he's not my cup of tea, uh, in general, but yeah. I, I'm also like, this man isn't that attractive. Like he seems like a, a thick, kind of thick boy. He's got that kind of a, that weird, a that, that Leno chin. But he's like doesn't seem like that all that all that great. Not a very uh, he's not a peach, you know. He's not someone I'd be going out of my way to be like. I want to hang out with you for a little mm. bit. Let's just chat because this poor naive woman, you don't just go and chat with famous men. They want something. They always do. Oh, uh, Simon concludes. Also, I want to know how did the family got to see the Pope so easily. Probably a good question. I, I don't think they let just anyone see the Pope, but I mean, he Family mentioned several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah that his his fa- uncle works for in the Vatican, so yeah. I think it's established what, there. What else does the Pope have to do in 1952 exactly? Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on in the 50s, Jarrett, in the Catholic religion. Did you not know that? I don't. I don't give a shit. But I mean, obviously they're <laughs> they're 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 they're, hanging, they're, they're meeting. Uh, these like nobodies. So, I mean, not much to do. You ever seen the? You ever seen the movie Sister Act? That's what the Pope was doing. Finally, hey, what? Hey, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah, yeah, get to it. Tell me about you Simon. Let me do do my thing. Uh, do you like Jared? Do you like the movie Step Brothers? Mm, that's okay. Uh, Simon gave it a half star. Mm, that's a bit much. That's almost as like. A, that's almost like saying that White Shake is. White shit. White shit. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, a lot of their five star movies are just animated things, but this is what what I find strange. So their bio says they're a French Canadian film student. Uh. Okay, sure. However, you know what I find very strange? The White Sheik is their pinned review. Are they that proud of it? <laughs> but why? Maybe it's very popular. How many likes does it have? Two. What? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I mean they don't they don't have a huge fan base as Simon person. They have ten ten followers is all, but uh I don't know. I just find that strange. It's like why is how is the white sheik their pinned review on their uh their thing? This is Bizarre. the one they'll remember me by. <laughs> this is the one everyone's gonna remember my one and a half star white sheik <laughs> gay leno joke. That's right. <sighs> Wonderful. Ethan Rosenberg two stars. I find mm-hmm. Fellini's blend of carnivalesque borderline, if not outright farcical tone and serious as hell melodrama wildly insincere. His characters are superficial at best, which is why his most successful films work primarily because of the strong performances at their centers. Viz uh, Juliette Messina and Cabiria. Remember, remember Cabiria? Remember her showing up in this movie, RJ? Marcello That's Mastrioni the, uh-huh. in uh, eight and eight and a half. These actors can evince, uh, in events that blend <laughs> with the flick of the eye or a particular expression. They embody what makes Fellini tick. Ju- uh, Giulietta Messina has a cameo here in the white shake, totally blowing these actors out of the water with her charm and pretty much 
proving my assertion so much that RJ was like, couldn't stop talking about it, was hovering around one and a half stars until the last scene, which has some inexplicable magic. I, Vitaloni, uh, remains my favorite, a total UFO in Fellini's oeuvre. And funny, a true mm. bridge between neorealism and whatever you want to call what came next in Italy. What came next in Italy, Jared? Uh, Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> I, I, oh, I'm pretty sure they good. stopped. They stopped making movies until Cannibal Holocaust. So, that, that's, gotcha. That's I think the history of Italian cinema. I gotcha. Do you want to hear the history of Ethan Rosenberg's ratings? Yes. So they have like a billion five star reviews, so that's not interesting. But I do find some weird things in their half stars. So good movies that have half stars are uh, Bat- Batman v Superman and Freddy Got Fingered. Uh, there's also some other half star movies that you might be interested in: Fight Club, Gummo, oh, your favorite movie Crash, fuck this oh. Space which, which, Jam. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Which Crash? Uh, the Paul Haggis Crash. Oh, no one gives a shit about that. Yeah, uh, but then also like Shape of Water and Driving Miss Daisy, they gave a half a star, which is weird. And then the one that I find like they also did like Requiem for a Dream and American Beauty half star. It's like that's strange. But this is the real one that I find very strange. They gave Radio a half a star <laughs> from the director oh. of Summer Catch, which we brought up in the preamble. Summer Catch, Radio. Why did they? What's their beef with Radio? RJ, if you is have it cause, to ask, is you'll it, never know. Uh, I mean, I understand the controversy of <laughs> the, actors playing things that they maybe don't represent fully. However, radio is wholesome mm, in a sense. Or, no, or perhaps as you've a uh, word that you've used recently, trite. Trite. Uh, well, have you seen Radio, Jarrett? I have not, RJ. I have seen. Can we make that a Patreon goal? I have seen. No, I have seen the trailer, (laughs) and I remember like fucking ripping on that movie for a really long time because oh, you have been. Oh yeah. Well, not for not for a long time. It's up there. That and uh, the trailer for Domestic Disturbance with uh, John Travolta (laughs) and uh, our boy Vince Vaughn, everyone's favorite. Oh. I know that movie. That's a good show. No, it's not. <laughs> not 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 it's the, not not, but, uh, not the tra- that trailer though. It has this amazing bit with like John Travolta going like, "I want to see you burn," and this thing would play constantly at this video store that uh, Corey and I would go to to like find movies, and like we'd be there for like forty five minutes looking at through like tapes to decide what we were going to rent, and this mm-hmm. ad would play over and over and over again. And then uh, this was also compounded by uh, the trailer for that remake of The Big Bounce. Um, and it would play that one. Um, oh, I can't believe I'm playing with that musician's name. Anyway, there's the, the music in that, though. It plays over and over and over and over again. And it was just like <laughs> we would just do it to one another. We were, we were wa- doing something unrelated, not in the store, and just start na, 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 na. Elvis Costello. <laughs> that's who I'm thinking of. <laughs> That so- was he in radio? No, he's he's in. Uh, he did he, his music is used in the trailer for the Big Bounce. This, that's to say, I'm never watching radio. <laughs> I'm on the radio. I don't, I don't give a shit what you want to do, Jarrett. I'm on a podcast. You are going to maybe, watch radio. Maybe if it was called podcast, it was about a special. What about guy. podcast? A special little guy who, who's like, I'm on a podcast. You're gonna watch radio. And it'll be a Patreon goal. And it might be Spine 2000. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Mm. Anything else you want to say here, RJ? No, this movie is lame. (laughs) You know what I mean? After the break, Mm -hmm. RJ goes to have a bath in nice hot water. I'll have mine tomorrow. And I'm going to stew in my own juices. Are you going to have a bath tomorrow night, though? Mm, it costs money. I might just, it's might, true. I might just, you know, save some money, you know, get real gross. Well, what was that, uh, that one pretentious movie we watched a while ago where they shared the bath water? Do you remember that one? It had Jack Nance in it. Who 
<laughs> what? Do you not remember that movie we watched like fucking two months ago with Jack Nance in it? <laughs> Jack Nance. Jack Palance. <laughs> what? Jack Palance. <laughs> Do you remember that? God damn. What what's what, going what on? What was that movie with Jack <laughs> Palance? What is happening? Contempt. What's happening in our life? They share the bathwater. Oh, contempt. Do they? Is that a thing? Yes. Oh man. Water was expensive, I guess. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>